Hello, this is part two of the Love Summer Art Used Paper Towel Collage. I'm Linda Ann Smith and my blog is Studio A B C spelled S E E dot blogspot.com. I'm on the Color Art Design Team. We have a brand new Facebook page uh, called Color Art Paint Studio where you can show us what you're doing. Here's what the canvas looked like when I ended part one of making a collage with used paper towels. I used Mod Podge to attach paper towels that I had previously wiped paint brushes or paint off of the table with. Those paper towels had a lot of color in them and I saved them just for collage. And this is what it looked like when I worked on it again. I used the same exact process of adding layer after layer on top of each other with, a, with Mod Podge to make them adhere. I sort of had the idea that I was going to make an abstract out of this, but I put it beside my computer last night and this woman kept staring at me out of this. So if I thought if I see that woman again in the morning, I'll just help her come out of the canvas. This is the way the canvas was turned when I was seeing the woman last night, but when I got up this morning, the lighting was different and I don't see it in this page. However, when I went away for just a few minutes and came back, there she was. I guess I was looking at it from a different angle. Because of the shimmer in my color art paints, the direction you turn the canvas and the way that the light is shining can make a total difference in the way the picture looks. I can't see her in this shot uh, the way the camera reflected this particular paint, but I know she's in there, so I'm going to go searching for her. Uh, she just keeps staring at me from the real canvas. Here's where I started playing with a little bit of the paint on top of the canvas. Just enough to start bringing out some flesh tones of her face. Can you begin to see the outline of a face here like I did? I decided to pull out some of the flat acrylics that I had on hand, not the color art products, but something without so much shimmer so that I could start to form her face better. I love to do portraits with the shimmering colors, but that rough paper towel surface just provided too much of a challenge for me to keep trying to manipulate and see what I was doing. So the flat acrylics worked best for me right here. Let me tell you that if you're looking for a simple project, working on top of the texture of these paper towels may not be the best place to make a portrait. I ran into several areas that were very difficult for me to form, such as across her nose, which you'll see later on in the video. Uh, there were lots of wrinkle paper towels in the area across her nose, and it made it very challenging to make a pretty face. first saw this lady in the picture I thought she was going to be a lady probably in her late 20s but when I finished I found out that she was much younger than that because I kept doing layer after layer after layer on this. This is probably more layers on a portrait than I've ever done in the past. There were times when I wish I'd just done something like a fairy on a toadstool or something like that on this pretty back shimmery background but I was just compelled to bring this figure out and I kept working on her and working on her. As she transformed and changed before my eyes with all the layers, I wondered if I would know when to stop because sometimes we don't know when to stop and sometimes we don't know when to keep going. I knew she was wearing a hat but I wasn't quite sure where to define it yet. I knew that it would reveal itself to me as I painted some more. So I started painting in the neck. And later I started adding back in some of the color art 
uh, shimmering paints because I thought I needed those shimmers to go all the way through the whole painting, not just on the outside of her face. So I worked a layer back and forth, back and forth of shimmery, the shimmery color art paints with the flat acrylic paints. If you mix uh, the shimmery paints with the flat acrylics, you'll often lose your shimmer, uh, especially anything that has a white in it, such as this flesh tone that I was using. The shimmer is going to disappear. It, uh, it tones down the mica and becomes a flat paint instead of a shimmering paint. When you're new at painting portraits, sometimes your art eye just can't see those blues and greens and all the other colors that are um, present in the flesh tones. And I wanted to retain some of this is the reason I worked layer upon layer. But here what I'm doing is going around her face, making it darker uh, with some of the, it's called Blue Flame Silk Acrylic Glaze. And when you put these on and without brushing them in real thick, they make a really nice thin layer of color that you can work one layer on top of another many, many times without losing the freshness. When you're working with paintings, especially with something as um, demanding as a portrait, you have to be very aware of your edges. We, I wanted some crisp edges. Uh, I wanted her face to show up, so I went around it with the shimmery paints of the background. I'll admit with this impressionistic style that I started with, it was difficult to know exactly uh, how much crisp edges to have in there. And I just kept working. That's the way I paint. I sometimes overwork, and I'm not sure if I overwork this one or not. But a lot of times, most of the time when I'm working, I get to a point where I hate it. I really can't stand it. You've heard me say that before if you've looked at my videos. And that's the point where I know, keep working because I'm almost there. But sometimes I keep working until I overwork it. And occasionally I still get frustrated enough that I just have to put it away for a while. I think sometimes beginners get a little frustrated and discouraged because if something doesn't turn out right, then they don't think that they know how to paint. They don't, they don't want to work for it. Not every painting that an artist does turns out to be his masterpiece. And uh, you can expect a few that you're going to sand off and gesso under. This doesn't happen to be one. I'm going to keep this one because I really like the textures in it. The colors are rich. There's layer after layer. And I think for that reason alone, that it can stand as a painting. You might notice that I work all over the canvas. I don't uh, work in one spot at a time. I'll adjust this and adjust that and go back and see how the values, the value is the lightness and darkness, how the intensity of the color looks beside another color. It's all um, a game of relativity for me. Colors can look dull or bright, light or dark, depending on what color they're placed beside. And back when the French Impressionists were painting, they were painting one color beside another and comparing and looking at it and to see, you know, is this warm enough to be here to create the light? I'm going to use some of this spicy tomato to bring out her face a little more. I think she needs some rosy, rosier colors. I've got some bluish colors there and some brownish colors. But I'm gonna go for this rosy color now. And I actually mixed that uh, spicy tomato with a little bit of autumn leaf 
These are all the silk acrylic glazes that I'm working with at this point, going right over that blue in her eye to create another layer of, of uh, color. Completely changes the color. I put in the nostrils probably 15 times and redid them. I reshaped the face many times. As I said, this was not the easiest thing I ever did, but it was enjoyable. So when you start not getting things just like you want them, just enjoy the painting process. Start watching how the colors change when you place one on top of another. Let it be an experiment, if nothing else. But playing with the paint is the way you're gonna learn best. You can't be an athlete without practicing, and this painting is, in a sense, very comparable to becoming an athlete. You have to practice, you have to work with it. I don't know of very many artists who just pick up a brush and start painting and everything turns out perfectly. I began working in the background with layers of silk acrylic glazes different in many different colors over the background of paper towels and napkins that I'd already laid onto the canvas in part one. It gave it a deep, rich, but dark color. Then I decided to use that piece of doily that you saw in part one as part of her collar. I measured this carefully around her neck and cut off a small piece of it to go in the hat that I was going to add later. Unfortunately, I decided to change the neckline later and so I had to paint in an area at the end of the collar on the right to um, actually reach all the way around her neck. One of the wiser things that I did was I painted this collar separately before attaching it with um, solar gold silk acrylic glaze and emperor's gold silk acrylic glaze. That way, it wasn't so tedious to paint after it was attached to the canvas. And here's how it looked after I glued it to the picture and added a bit of paint as embellishment. I darkened the areas around her face and body to bring it forward. Added long hair. Building the layers of the hair. I felt that the face became too dark and lost its presence in the composition. So I did a glaze across the entire face and lightened it, and lightened it again, and yet another time. Here's a detail of the doily that I painted gold and used a piece in the hat area. This is a detail of some of the beautiful layers that are around her face. Because the paints have a shimmer, they look different in different lighting. This small area would make a beautiful abstract all by itself. What began as a pile of paint-covered paper towels ended up as a lovely young girl, and I didn't even know I was going there. Sometimes you just have to enjoy the process of painting and putting layer upon layer and tone upon tone and color upon color, uh, seeing how they juxtapose, seeing how one thing looks against another, painting more layers on, adding more shadows, adding more lights, and something happens, something magical sometimes happens. I invite you to try this process. Just try playing with the paint, doing something that's enjoyable to your eye. If it doesn't work out, fix it, go over it, layer it, play with it. The word play comes into my mind a lot whenever I'm doing my art. I tell people that my work is hard work, and it is, but if you enjoy your work, that's everything. I think she's finished, but I say that with caution because sometimes I can look at a painting on my wall for months and then decide that it needs one more little touch somewhere. So I'll let this dry for a while before I put the final layer of varnish on. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.